tonight, a gruesome discovery of a decomposing male body is discovered by police. The aftermath of Operation Restore Confidence lingers while many continue to advocate for justice. Or whether the government would decide maybe later what we will do with, with those police officers. And a wave of youth votes is anticipated for the next general election. All this and more coming up in tonight's broadcast. This is the Hot 7 Nightly News with Lovelace and Amy Jordan. Good evening, it is Friday the 20th of September 2019. Welcome to the Hot 7 Nightly News on Flow Channel 117, also being simulcast on KISS FM. You can also watch us on our website at www.caribbeanhottv.com or on our Caribbean Hot FM mobile app. I'm Rochelle Gonzalez, standing in for lovely St. Amy Joseph. Thank you for joining us. The Royal St. Lucia Police Force is investigating the circumstances surrounding the discovery of a badly decomposed body at Grace in Viewfort. The decapitated body was discovered approximately one mile upstream from the Grace intake on Friday the 20th of September at around 6 a.m. according to sources. Law enforcement officials indicate the body appears to be that of a male. Meanwhile, Wasco put out a statement on Friday afternoon wishing to inform the general public that upon receiving news of the discovery of the corpse in the area on Thursday, immediate action was taken to shut down the raw water line supplying the Grace treatment plant. Whilst we cannot be certain of how long the corpse may have been in the raw water source, lab test results from the Grace intake confirm the absence of contaminants in the water supply. There are no further details surrounding the death at this time. However, we will have more in a subsequent broadcast. In other news, Minister for National Security Herman Gil Francis says a recent meeting held with police officers directly involved in Operation Restore Confidence sought to engage the men and women in dialogue to chart a path forward. Though a conclusion was not reached at the meeting, Herman Gill said an, an, an understanding prevails among the officers that justice must prevail. More in this report. The infamous Operation Restore Confidence, conducted in 2011, was carried out by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to control a crime spree affecting the nation. Once completed, members of the force were under suspicion for carrying out extrajudicial killings. Under the Leahy Law, the U.S. restricted assistance to St. Lucian law enforcement. Fast forward to 2019, and still no prosecution has been made on the matter. Minister for National Security Herman Gil Francis says the men involved have a full understanding that the scale of justice must be made even. All options are open, whether they wanted to retire or whether the government would decide maybe later what we will do with, with those police officers. But I th felt it important that we speak to them and get a sense of, of what they, they wanted. Um, I, I, we didn't come to any conclusion, um, but I think they, they understood that, that justice must be, must be served. And, and not only is justice served, but it must appear to have been served. Um, so we're not going to rush into deciding what we're going to do. Um, the DPP's office has some assistance from my police officers. I have three police officers detached from the police force working directly with me and reporting to the DPP as to what is happening. If you remember the, um, um, the impacts report that was handed over to Dr. Kenny Anthony, we all realized that he made a mess of it to go on the news and, 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 and say all sorts of things which really compromised everything. So we are actually having to start from scratch doing investigations and so on. That is why I took the three police officers and attached them to me. So they're working but they work um, in conjunction with the DPP so that we started the process. If you notice that some police officers were brought in for questioning and so on. So the process is going on and, and hopefully um, we will get a resolution soon. The lingering unsettled issues with the impacts report has left many officers advocating for swift justice, which they say can ultimately clear their name and allow them to move up the ranks. I said so very, very early in my, in my tenure as, as the minister. I, I was chastised by some a particular caller to the news that I heard is I was saying that the guys want to, need to get promoted and so on. But at the end of the day, the guys are human beings. They, they, they went through a process. It wasn't on their own um, volition. They did it as police officers, uh, but yet still persons died. And we have to give the families of those individuals a sort of um, ending. They must know exactly what, what transpired. And so that is what the process is all about. Um, we're not because you're, you're a police officer that 
something happens that we just sweep it under the carpet, under the carpet. it has to be investigated and it has to be vent, um, ventilated properly in, in, in the public so that everybody is going to be satisfied with the end product. The U.S. alleges 11 extrajudicial killings were carried out by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force during the span of Operation Restore Confidence. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalfred. Members of the general public were called upon to sit in and be part of a regional security system panel discussion so that they could voice their concerns on matters of citizen security. The meeting carrying the theme transitioning the police from a state-centered approach to a citizen-oriented approach to security took place at the City Hall in Castries on Friday morning. The RSS, in collaboration with the Department of Home Affairs and National Security, as well as the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, jointly hosted the panel discussion on the topic, Transitioning the Police from a State-Centered Approach to a Citizen-Oriented Approach to Security. The forum, which was held at the Castro City Hall, was purposefully designed so that the public, including persons from various organizations, would feel free to walk in, participate and contribute positively to the discussion. Program coordinator for the RSS headquarters in Barbados, Ria Reed Bowen, said that this is the final panel discussion in a series of seven, which has been coordinated and funded under the RSS 10th European Union project. It is a project that is being executed in collaboration with the EU under the CARICOM Crime and Security Cooperation Program, where the European Union would provide some funds and the regional security system would also provide um, some funds to support the strengthening of our capacities um, with respect to border security and other regional security matters um, within the member states of the regional security system. This is the final one under the project. We would have had a panel discussion in every other RSS member state, so we culminate in St. Lucia. Um, the panel discussions are really um, geared towards starting to engage the public uh, and build public awareness on matters that are pertinent to regional and national security in each of the member states. The program coordinator said the approach taken to involve members of the public is a new venture for them at the RSS. She said the public view is important. This is our first time engaging the public in this manner um, for the RSS. Um, what we are doing is we're going to continue to engage the public where we look back now and we start to get a feel for um, what the public would like to see um, in terms of how we go about building regional security. And we will take that into consideration as we go forward when we try to put out our regional policies and plans. We just continue to keep them engaged and they, become, they continue to be part of the conversation and part of the solutions going forward for us. So we hope to have one at least um, in our member states going forward, but you can't hold me to that. Public support for the law enforcement initiatives and understanding of other key social dynamics is expected to be bolstered through an ongoing public awareness campaign, which is being led by the regional security system. Reporting for the Hot 7 News, I am Novita Emmanuel Green. According to sources, the island is allegedly down to two functioning health centers in Castries area. Said to be closed is the T. Roche and Entrepot Health Center. Minister for Health Mary Isaac was questioned on the stress level the closure would now put on the remaining functional health centers. However, the minister insists the closures are strategically aligned and ensures the continuation of healthcare services remains available to the public by alternative centers. What I know is PAHO has um, given us, is repairing about 14 of our wellness centers and um, quite a few of them have been done. They also um, have done Comfort Bay. Um, this gift is being done in a very, very strategic way in that when we close one health center for us to renovate or do the repairs or do the greening, we always provide an alternative. So I do not know that this should be a problem. Preferring Cassius East at the same time, it doesn't seem practical to me. Well, if that is the case, and I say a big if, right, they always provide an alternative um, place for the people to go to. Attempts to receive a definite confirmation from the Minister of Health in regards to the closure of the two wellness centres proved futile. Going back to the Tiroshi and Entrepo centres, um, can you confirm whether they are closed at this time or not? You would have to check with the people at the Ministry of Health because they are in charge of that programme. 
And if they are closed, I am saying there is an alternative place that the people should go and they would have been informed of that. Reports also indicated staff displeasure at the Babano Wellness Center. Isaac says Babano boasts one of the best wellness centers on island and any frustration experienced by the staff may be stemming from an issue with the air conditioning system, which she says will be rectified quickly. Elections are drawing nearer and regardless of the absence of an official date, it has been speculated that both major political parties are in preparation for the election. It has been observed that the electoral office has been participating in pre-election activities, ensuring that persons are properly registered to vote. Journalist Earl Bousquet says the upcoming election is of high importance to young persons who will be voting for the first time. He underscores that the introduction of education for democratic citizens is a major step in preparing young people to make informed political decisions. In 1979, the minimum voting age in St. Lucia was decreased from 21 to 18. However, historically, youth voter numbers have been incredibly low. Journalist Earl Buske says with the influx of young politicians currently showing interest in contesting for the next general elections, the statistics may change drastically. He says young voters can offset major change by showing their presence at the polls. In 2017, Britain experienced a surge of voters between the ages of 18 and 24, which greatly impacted final results, an anomaly now referred to as a youth quake. Bousquet says it is likely that a similar event will unfold in St. Lucia for the next general elections. The influence of the youth vote uh, set a historical precedent insofar as the influence of young people on votes. And um, St. Lucia has a tradition of young people um, getting involved in politics at a greater level than elsewhere. For example, you will remember that Christopher Hunt, as a TV personality, launched um, a party that contested a general election. And in as much as it was being done for fun, the party representing young people made an impression better than some of the more enlightened and more experienced individual candidates. For example, one of the, uh, those young candidates polled more than George Odlum, who had been in elections you know, for many periods before that. I'm saying that there are a number of things that need to be done differently. Number one, the parties should both be looking at young people. Busque says both parties are guilty of preparing manifestos, which amount to about a quarter page of youth involvement. He says the size of the youth voter pool is underestimated. The parties need to understand that until and unless the young people understand the importance of the vote, and the value of voting to the determination of their own future. Until that happens, we are going to be continuing, you know, just swiveling in mud like we are, changing government every five years like we've done in the last three elections, and more or less expressing disappointment with every ruling party rather than organizing for a complete change that will take into consideration the generational change that has taken place in St. Lucia. When asked on his views on the introduction of the subject, Education for Democratic Citizens, in primary schools, Busque commended this initiative and underscores the importance of street smart subjects. It's never too early to learn anything. Um, in all what's happening in Japan, the person who is proclaimed to be the leader of the violent protests and everything taking place in ja in in uh, Hong Kong, sorry, is a 22-year-old, Joshua Wong, been to jail a couple of times for protesting. I do not agree with how he and the people do their protests, but one of the things he has been able to do and they have been able to do is to galvanize and mobilize young people. And you look at the demonstrations in Hong Kong and in most of those places, you see young people. So children learning. I learned how to cross the streets through a, a subject called civics. I don't know if they still teach that at school, but that's how I learned to, to cross a pedestrian crossing. Um, these are, you, you have to instill in the minds of young people the importance of 
election. Bousquet says youth need to understand their impact on society, not just in elections, but their conceptual power over the future policies and structure of governments to come. For Hot 7 News, I am Jaco Wooding. This is the Hot 7 TV nightly news still to come. Viral sensation Charles is in the hot seat, talking relationships and commitment. Independent Senator urges the powers that be to use the Bahamas as an example to beef up resilience and a memorandum of understanding with the University of the Virgin Islands to offer expertise and resources to Sir Arthur Lewis Community College.